This is Dan York and I'm here at IT Expo in sunny Miami, Florida with uh, Jim Dalton who is the CEO of TransNexus. So welcome to the show, Jim. Thanks, Dan. So, you know, we're here at IT Expo talking about internet telephony, communications, everything else, and, and billing in my mind is probably one of the least exciting or interesting topics, but yet it's pretty critical. Why should people care? Well, Dan, I'm glad you asked that question. I mean, billing really is where everybody makes their money, and it's important. And really what we've been talking about is intercarrier billing. That's kind of the focus where TransNexus is. And that's really the key ingredient that gets networks to open up, because that's what we're all looking for in the terms of the promise of voice over IP for voice and uh, video communications. How do we get networks to open up to be like the World Wide Web, where any IP communication transaction can go peer-to-peer to a any other IP peer in the world. And it's the interconnect billing that really drives carriers to open up their networks and to interconnect with any and everybody. So billing is the mechanism that provides that incentive. And uh, so how do you provide that incentive for everyone to open up and uh, interconnect with everyone? So if we want to get to the big vision of IP communications all over, what you're saying is we got to basically uh, figure out where the money is. Exactly. It's incentives. How do you get people to want to connect with everyone? Today, the folks on how do I keep the bad guys out? You've got to turn that around and say, hey, my network is open for everybody. My subscribers want to hear directly peer to peer from everybody. I'll be glad to terminate those transactions, but there's a cost for me, and I need some control, and I need some way to get a share of the revenue that's being paid by the calling party, the originating party. And it's only fair. That's the way the world works. The entire network, end to end, needs a cut of that cascading payment. And if that's in place, the IP world for communications will be wide open. And it's the vision we've all had for what IP communications can be. Oh, that's cool. So now you talked in your talk about proprietary versus open protocols, et cetera. Could you talk a little bit about you know, what's here for open standards? Well, you know, open standards are really what are driving this. In terms of the network layer with SIP, you know, web services, those standards are they're out there, they're in place, and it's always how things begin. You define the technology, you get the technology out in the marketplace, it interoperability's there. The fundamental enablers in there. The last piece is the business model. And that's really what, the, what the, uh, the environment, the marketplace is trying to cope with now is how do we drive the business model to follow the technology model and drive the openness? So that's what we were talking about is interconnect building among carriers. Granted, it's not sexy, but it's what makes things happen and it's that openness, it is sexy. And what we were talking about is a standard called the Open Settlement Protocol, which is a standard format, XML over HTTP, that enables these route queries with authorization and then importantly the CDR collection in the standard format so any and everybody can exchange IP communications and get paid for them. So if I'm so in an OSP environment then if I'm making a SIP call I would query my OSP server to see if that call's authorized? Is that you know so it I'm is, you know, for the end user they'll never see it. This is all in the back office. It's a little bit like credit card transactions. You don't know what Visa is doing with those transactions. You just know that you paid for something and your, the store you bought it from, they're going to get paid. What happens between the merchant bank that serves that store and the issuing bank that gave you a credit card, you don't know. But all that glue that puts it together for so you can have universal use of that credit card, that's what needs to happen in the network. Same sort of thing with OSP. The end user will never see OSP, but his provider will. And his provider will use OSP to set up an exchange. The communication business end of these transactions, real time, seamlessly, uh, between carriers. That's what OSP enables. Now, you've mentioned for carriers, can it also be used at the enterprise side? You know, it absolutely can be used at the enterprise side. You know, if you want to make a secure private network, I mean, OSP is really designed for the public environment to have secure transactions between individual carriers over a non-secure network, but absolutely that same technology can be used at the enterprise level to build your own private enterprise network with a lot of peers around the world. Really, the model to think about is think about branch offices all around the world with their own IP PBXs. How do we put all those IP PBXs together in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion where headquarters can keep track of the routing, have, let's say, preferential routing to preferred off-net carriers, manage it all from a single point, and then collect call detail records. OSP is a great fit for that use case. Now, you know, just being a security guy, you're immediately making me think, well, you know, the credit card carriers have been having a little bit of challenge keeping our data safe. Uh, what about OSP? I mean, you got the same kind of exposure there, wouldn't you, with making sure the OSP providers are keeping that data protected? Well, that's a, that's a great question. And really, OSP is a, a communication protocol for routing and CDR collection. 
to secure all this, you have to use standard asymmetric cryptography, public key, private key cryptography. So the standard mechanisms to secure financial transactions have been used for 20 years. You have to apply that for uh, the same type of security for OSP. Cool. Now, what's TransNexus? Uh, you know, where do you fit into this whole picture? Well, we sell route servers to uh, basically carriers, service providers that help them manage their routing and billing for their own network. And uh, for enterprises, one thing we're announcing at this show is we're uh, making a limited version of our commercial server, which we call Osprey, available for free, for free download, for managing those enterprise networks. We provide a central point, central application for a wide area enterprise network with lots of voice over IP peers. So if I'm an enterprise network, how does this fit in with my infrastructure? What do I do with it? I can download a free server, but how do I use it? Well, you set it up and basically you can put in all your routing policies for all your peers in a central point. And your peers will query that routing database for really headquarters approved routing, whatever it may be, between peers or off net from a single point. And it can be distributed, so you can have OSP servers with the same routing table distributed around the world. So it's highly reliable and high performance. And then like we talked about, you can collect the call detail records for all those transactions, which is important for uh, internal accounting. The CFO wants to know who's driving my telecom house. I want to reallocate those out to the branch offices. Huh. Now, so for me to use that, though, within an enterprise, it sounds like I'm going to need OSP-capable IPPBXs or SIP proxies, et cetera, right? That's exactly right. So there are definitely choices out there, certainly a lot in the open source world. Asterisk has supported OSP for a number of years. A lot of customers of ours are using open SIPs and open SARE. Uh, Cisco supports OSP. So there are a number of devices that natively support OSP. Those that don't, we see people are using uh, some of the open source devices, such as Asterisk or open SARE, is an interface for other devices, SIP devices that don't support OSP. Gotcha, gotcha. Cool. Well, so uh, any announcements you're going to have out on the show floor, or, or are you demoing the software out there? Well, Dan, like I said, the big announcement for us was the announcement that Osprey is now freely available for anybody to use. And like I say, it's, uh, it's really commercial-grade software. It's been in production and carrier networks since 2000. Now it's freely available uh, for enterprises to use in their own network. And we're targeting really the Asterisk community because we think it's a great application. It doesn't exist for, app for Asterisk users for centralized routing and CDR collection for a wide area enterprise network. And so where do people get that? It's available for download from our website, transnexus.com. Okay. And what's next for OSP? You, you know, you talked about it here. Is it, is it evolving within Etsy, I think you said? You know, it's an Etsy protocol, and it's, uh, it's actually been around for a while, and the adoption is slowly uh, picking up speed as really voice over IP peering becomes more of a real problem, and also practical because interop standards at the, at the SIP layer are becoming uh, more possible. So it's evolving. It's in version 4 right now, and we think in a couple of years it'll be version 5 because there are already extensions that are being identified for the OSP protocol as IP applications develop. But one nice thing about OSP, it's, it's HTML, uh, it's XML over uh, HTTP, and it can be easily extended, so you don't have to wait for the standard to be uh, extended to put in your own new features or to go ahead and extend the standard now. But we expect a, a new release of the standard, version 5, in a couple of years. Cool. Where, where can people learn more about OSP? You know, the uh, best place you can go to the Etsy website, uh, etsy.org, that's the European Telecommunications Standards Institute and read the spec. It's there, or there's information on the uh, TransNexus website. Thank you for your time, Jim. I've been here speaking with uh, Jim Dalton, who's the CEO of TransNexus. Thanks.